In today's battle for the EV customer, it's all about power. And the driving force behind this power is the EV battery, which is the single most important factor determining the EV specs. Such as how many miles do you get, how long does charging take, and if you're going to cross the border, can you make it to the next charging station. The battery is at the heart of every full electric car, and this makes the battle between battery swapping and supercharging a very interesting one, since both options have their benefits and major drawbacks, which we're going to highlight in this video. So let me know in the comment section what your thoughts on swapping versus charging are. Now let's dive right in. So what are we talking about exactly when we say swapping versus charging? Well, we all know this guy, Elon Musk, who owns and runs Tesla, which is currently the world leader in EVs and has one of the best and most innovative battery systems. Now, since its creation, Tesla has been obsessed with creating a better battery and a faster charging system, which has led to the worldwide infrastructure of Tesla supercharging units that can currently charge a battery up to 80% in about 40 minutes. In doing so, Tesla has single-handedly transformed the EV landscape, offering increased mileage and a much faster charging time while making stunning-looking cars. Just recently, NIO launched its battery swapping 2.0 with an ingenious system to replace the entire battery in a car with a fresh one, where the whole process is done automatically. All you have to do is activate the swap mode and the car's autopilot will team up with the swapping station to park the car, it then removes the current battery and installs a fully charged battery in just 4 minutes. So at this point, you could easily say NIO has clearly won the battle because 4 minutes for a fully charged battery versus 40 minutes for 80% charge is a no-brainer. However, things are a bit more complicated than this. Because right now, yes, swapping beats charging hands down, but if you look at the more practical everyday use, you would most likely get to any place that you want to go to with less than 200 miles of battery power. And to get this range, you would only need to charge for about 50 minutes. As you can see, charging and swapping for everyday use are now a bit closer together, but more importantly, the networks vary greatly in size. You see, Tesla has well over 25,000 superchargers in the US and over 6,000 in Europe, and they are adding to these every single month at great speed. At the same time, NIO has only 200 swapping stations in China and is working together with Sinopec, the country's largest gas station owner, to deploy another 5,000 swapping stations over the next couple of years. So here is where I would call Advantage Tesla. Because even if your technology is faster, if you can't access the swapping technology, it doesn't matter. This 5,000 swapping station deployment schedule also highlights a key problem in the battle between swapping and charging, and that is the fact that in the time it takes NEO to deploy more swapping units, Tesla will launch newer batteries with an extended range and faster charging times. Before we continue, please like and subscribe to the channel for more videos. So the question really becomes, how much will swapping and charging differ from each other by the time that swapping is as widespread as charging is right now? Tesla's Shanghai factory, for instance, is capable of producing 10,000 supercharging units per year, and the company has recently completed the prestigious Silk Road Corridor, a project where they place superchargers every 100 to 300 kilometers along a 5,000 kilometer stretch of road. So this all has fueled more criticism on battery swapping, even going as far as making a comparison between NEO and Better Place. Better Place went bankrupt after it had raised $800 million from investors because it could not make battery swapping work. Next to this, Tesla tried battery swapping in 2013 with no success, after which they abandoned the project and obviously they are now one of the loudest critics. Tesla's global VP, Tao Lin, even went as far as saying, battery swapping does not conform with the development of the EV market and will eventually be kicked out of the game. So if you take a quick look at the scoreboard again, we would probably read 1-2 in the battle of swapping versus charging, with Tesla as one of the best positioned companies representing charging. However, this is only part of the story. You see, NEO is nothing like Better Place, it's actually light years ahead of Better Place, with a much larger and dedicated customer base, a more advanced fully automated swapping system, and a well-funded production infrastructure that is breaking record after record, reaching higher production levels every single quarter. But perhaps the most important argument in support of battery swapping and thus in support of companies like NEO is that battery swapping is an extra, not the sole solution with those cars. You can still charge a NEO car at home with a Power or Power Plus charging station, just like a Tesla car, and you can also charge a NEO car at a public fast charging station, just like a Tesla. But unlike a Tesla, you can also swap out the battery and put in a fully charged one in under 5 minutes. It's interesting to see that critics of battery swapping always like to skip over the fact that those batteries can still be charged like any other and just go straight to dismissing the entire company that makes those cars. Right now, the EV sector as a whole is still in its infancy and things like long-term ownership effects have not been studied on a global scale like they have with petrol and diesel cars. 
An important aspect of this is for instance the resale value of a car, since the battery plays a huge part in this. We are already seeing the resale value of a full electric car plummet because of the wear on the battery and the fact that battery innovations make older batteries less desirable. When you buy a secondhand petrol or diesel car, you never ask how many times did you fill up the tank or how old is the gas tank. But these questions do matter a lot when buying a secondhand EV and this has led to the situation where in general a secondhand EV will retain around 40% of its original value versus the 50 to 70% of a conventional car. This becomes especially important due to the fact that most EVs are more expensive than their petrol or diesel equivalent. So this is an area where swapping the battery could really benefit the long term value of a car because if you can simply replace the battery whenever you want and still use a home charger or public fast charger whenever those are more convenient, your car will maintain much more of its original value which could be an extra $5,000 or $10,000 when you sell your car. Another major win for the battery swapping concept is in financing the car when you get it from the dealer. NIO has introduced the battery as a service model and this allows the new owner to buy the car and then lease the battery from the company. This way of buying a car saves you 70,000 yuan which is almost $11,000 US and you then pay a monthly fee for using the battery which comes down to around $150. So this almost $11,000 savings on the price of a new car is another little detail that most critics of battery swapping love to leave out, as if it's just a tiny amount. Obviously, this is a huge amount for most consumers and will greatly influence the choice of a particular EV. So now you have the option of getting an almost $11,000 discount on your new car and the possibility of getting an extra $5,000 to $10,000 when you resell your car. This to me sounds like a very strong argument for opting for a swappable battery system even if you're going to use the fast charging most of the time. So if you have a look at the scoreboard again, I would say it's now 3-2 in favor of swappable batteries simply because the new generation of swappable battery systems have solved all of the old problems and it gives the user an extra option that purely charging systems do not. When we look at the cities of the future, we can say one thing for sure, and that is that more and more people will live on a smaller and smaller area. This will make it very difficult for many people to have their own dedicated charging system, and this gives an advantage to battery swapping. You could then make the argument against swapping by saying that batteries will continue to improve, giving you more miles on a full charge, and you'll get more miles for just a 5 minute or 10 minute charge. But the funny thing is that this same argument actually proves the benefits of having a swappable battery. Because if you buy a car right now with a battery that will give you 200 miles in 50 minutes, then in 2 years when there's a newer battery that can give you 300 miles in 10 minutes, you would want to swap in your old battery for one of those newer ones. A car with a swappable system makes it very easy for newer batteries to be introduced into circulation, allowing you to use your old car to benefit from the newer batteries and getting more miles and faster charging without buying a whole new car. Swappable battery systems also open the door for other companies to specialize in making batteries for multiple cars, bringing the cost of a battery down even further and speeding up innovation as we've seen in many other industries. Almost no car manufacturer makes their own tires, they buy them from major manufacturers like Bridgestone, Michelin, Goodyear and Continental, even though tires are an essential part of a car's performance. So looking at the future, yes you could be the biggest car manufacturer and make your own batteries and your own charging system, which would basically make you the Apple of cars, but there is a reason why Samsung is still a major player in the smartphone industry and Apple does not make all the phones in the world. It's the same reason there is a universal Android operating system that is used by multiple independent phone manufacturers and the reason for that is innovation. Innovation creates options and people simply want to have multiple options so even if supercharging becomes the standard, battery swapping can definitely bring a lot of ground in the short term and could potentially grab a foothold in the EV space forever. This will simply depend on how well various companies execute the battery swapping concept and if they can continue to offer people true benefits over just charging. This was the swapping versus charging, please like and subscribe to the channel for more videos.